But we begin tonight with the former president's crime syndicate. Trump White House aide Peter Navarro is, as of today, locked in a federal prison. Day one of a four-month sentence. Before turning himself in, Navarro held a press conference at a strip mall parking lot down the street from the facility. He was convicted of contempt of Congress for refusing to comply with the January 6th committee. He even asked the Supreme Court to help him avoid prison time as he appealed his conviction. But ultimately, he failed. And now he's in prison, making him the very first Donald Trump senior aide to serve time in connection with the coup plot. Trump has to be afraid watching one of his top aides getting locked up. Though over the past couple of years, the cells have been filling up with these guys. Roger Stone, Michael Cohen, Rick Gates, George Papadopoulos, Steve Bannon, Michael Flynn, Paul Manafort, Alan Weisselberg, his very own Trump organization fined more than a million dollars for tax fraud. All the president's men now have criminal records. Or rather, all the four times indicted, twice impeached, adjudicated sexual abusers men. In that list of Donald Trump's very best people, I mentioned Paul Manafort. Remember him? If you've been following us during the magification of U.S. politics, then you certainly would remember Manafort, the key aide who seemed to appear out of nowhere to run Trump's campaign for free. He actually had some legit D.C. cred as a Republican consultant with ties to Presidents Bush and Reagan. During the Reagan era, he founded the Washington-based lobbying firm Black, Manafort and Stone. The Black being Charles Black and the Stone being none other than Roger Stone, the Trump foot soldier and Nixon zealot who would one day get pardoned by Trump for multiple felony convictions. Stone is the one you see there in the center. Manafort is on the left. Left. For the Washington Post, one of Manafort and Stone's first clients was a New York developer named Donald J. Trump, brought into their portfolio by Stone, who'd met him through the notorious Gotham lawyer Roy Cohn. You really can't make this stuff up. But as all of this firm stuff was happening, Manafort cooked up this side hustle that eventually blew into quite the lucrative gig. But not necessarily one you wrote home about, because Manafort's specialty became working for literally the world's worst people. He was this mercenary lobbyist. One of his clients was former Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos, who hired Manafort when he needed an image boost. The year after Marcos hired Manafort in 1986, Marcos won the country's presidential election thanks to rampant voter fraud. And his wife Imelda became famous for shoe hoarding while her country went broke. The dots are all connected here, right? But get this, Manafort was also a lobbyist for the opportunist dictator of then Zaire, the current Democratic Republic of Congo, Mobutu Sese Seko. Manafort functioned as Mobutu's de facto PR guy, and Mobutu, like Marcos, was a bad guy. In this 1989 article, the Washington Post writes of Mobutu, he keeps coming back to Washington with his hand out, and Congress keeps filling that hand in spite of the human rights abuses in Zaire and the inexplicable lack of progress by the country under his reign. The Republican administration winks at Mobutu because he has been a cooperative ally in Africa, and those are in short supply. But some Democrats are fed up with paying for a corrupt and abusive dictatorship. Now, remember, Manafort also helped steal the Ukrainian election for a Putin ally. And he went from doing that to working for Trump. And despite all of these people he worked for, dictators accused of human rights abuses and who lived lavishly as their people starved, it was Trump he took the fall for. And now, supposedly, Manafort is back with Trump eyeing him for a 2024 campaign role. The timing? Very interesting. Trump is bringing him back at a time when he desperately needs money. Cough, cough. Tish James and the New York civil trial. And Manafort is the who are you going to call guy when you desperately need cash or to steal an election so that you can become president and use the presidency to enrich yourself and your family. The man lives lavishly himself. He owns a $15,000 ostrich feather coat. He's friends with dictators and the oligarchs no one has ever heard of. Has them on speed dial, I'm sure. And during his four-decade career, he, well, kind of became an oligarch himself. Joining me now is Michael Isakoff, investigative journalist and co-author of Find Me the Votes, all about the Georgia uh, election, I mean, the Georgia uh, crisis. Uh, and we're going to uh, bring you back to talk all about Georgia, because it's a whole mess down there with that prosecution. Talk to me about Manafort, because he also kind of played ball in the Trump campaign with a Russian spy. 
Yes, he did. I mean, look, I'm having flashbacks to 2016 Same. right Same. now. I mean, it, Manafort was sort of the first red flag when I and other people started reporting into the Trump world's ties to Russia. You had Trump, of course, who was saying all these nice things about Vladimir Putin while he was trying to do a, a business deal in Moscow. But when he brought Manafort in, that just raised all sorts of questions. Yeah. Manafort, as you pointed out, had been the political consultant for years for uh, Viktor Yanukovych, who was the pro-Putin president of Ukraine at the time, uh, or up until 2014, yep. the Maidan uh, uh, uprising took place. and The Orange Yanukovych, Revolution, they call it. The Orange it. Yep. Revolution, and he flees to Moscow. That had been, so Yanukovych was Manafort's main patron yep. for years. Um, and all the money from the Party of Regions, which was Yanukovych's uh, party, came from oligarchs who were close to Putin, many of whom Manafort had all these ties to. Yeah. Um, Oleg Deripaska, mm -hmm. a name from the past. Yeah. I'm sure you remember. I, I mean, he was a business partner of uh, Manafort while he was considered one of the two or three oligarchs closest to Vladimir Putin, had all sorts of suspected ties to organized crime. The U.S. government wouldn't let him in the country yeah. as a result of that. And here's Manafort not only doing business with, not only representing him, but they did business together. And yeah. then they had, then they fell out. Yeah. And this is what really got me. Um, this is May of 2016. I discovered that um, Deripaska, the pro-Putin billionaire is suing Manafort in the Cayman Islands because <laughs> he's, he can, because millions of dollars in their business deal disappeared. So at the very moment that he gets hired by the Trump campaign, he he's money. in hock yeah. to a Russian oligarch who was tied in with Vladimir And so the, the giving over of of non-public campaign data to someone who turns out to essentially be a Russian spy. Yes. That and also when he then takes over the Trump campaign, changing only one thing in the Republican platform, which is to remove the plank in the Republican platform for support right. for Ukraine. Right. Putting all that together, yeah. Donald Trump is now desperate for money. Yeah. And the only way that he can stay out of prison is to become president. Is it suspicious to you that he's bringing this specific guy back in who has ties to Russian cash and he helps steal elections? <laughs> Look, I think it's going to be suspicious to a lot of people. Let's go back to the Senate Intelligence Committee report, yeah. which was, you know, they spent years investigating bipartisan this report. bipartisan report. And they concluded that Manafort, because of one of his closest associates, was this guy, Konstantin Kalimna. Mm -hmm. who was viewed by the FBI as a Russian intelligence asset. Manafort is meeting with him while he's chairman of the, of the, of the Trump campaign and sharing um, internal polling data yeah. with him at the Grand Havana Room sure. in New York. Um, Senate Intelligence Committee report described this. It said Manafort was a grave counter counterintelligence threat. Mm. Who was the chairman? of the Senate Intelligence Committee at the time that report was released. Was it Marco Rubio? It was Marco <laughs> Rubio. So one question, uh, you know, you and others might want to ask of Mar Marco Rubio, is yeah. he comfortable mm. with uh, somebody who he declared to be a grave counterintelligence threat, threat yeah. working for the Republican nominee? For oh, President. Michael, you know his answer will be whatever Trump wants. <laughs> whatever Trump wants. Michael Isikoff, a fantastic journalist. We're going to bring you back to talk about Georgia in that case. Thank you Love very to much. Do it. Thank much. you. Let's bring in Congressman Adam Schiff of California. California, a candidate for United States Senate and a former member of the January 6th Select Committee. Uh, hopefully you were able to hear Michael Isakoff, great journalism there. But are you concerned, um, Congressman, from, the, from a national security perspective, that Donald Trump, who is desperate for money and who needs to be president in order to make the cases against him, the federal cases go away, is turning to Manafort again? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, let's remember that during that 2016 campaign, while Manafort is the chair of the campaign, he's secretly meeting with this uh, Russian intelligence officer or operative, Konstantin Kalimnik, as you were discussing, giving them internal campaign polling information. This is the same Russian intelligence uh, that is hacking and dumping the DNC documents, that is, uh, you know, working with a uh, troll farm in St. Petersburg, to try to, you know, essentially run a covert social media campaign for Donald Trump. 
Uh, so he is effectively the liaison between the Trump campaign and Russian intelligence. Uh, and he, as part of that relationship, he's also involved in a pro-Russian plan for eastern Ukraine. <laughs> what could there possibly be to worry about in having someone like that brought into a presidential campaign again? Uh, not to mention the fact that he was tried and convicted of various fraudulent activities, uh, including those around not registering as a foreign agent, involved with trying to intimidate other witnesses. And we don't know even more about his role uh, and his relationship with Russian intelligence because he used encrypted apps uh, and he refused to cooperate when it came to Kalimnik. So all kinds of sirens going on with this prospect. And by the way, it does kind of make you sit back and think about the fact that Donald Trump said he would allow Putin to do whatever the hell he wants to our NATO allies. And he's doubled down on getting his apparatchiks in the House of Representatives to refuse to fund Ukraine. It, Donald Trump needs money. Vladimir Putin might be the world's richest man because he's robbed all of the oligarchs that he uh, has under his control. Does it concern you that perhaps what Donald Trump is hoping to trade to, for help from Russia again to get himself back in the White House is Ukraine? Oh, absolutely. You know, what we saw in the first presidential campaign when he was lying about having any business dealings in Russia, even as Michael Cohen, his lawyer, was on the phone with the Kremlin right up to the point of the Republican convention trying to make this deal for Moscow Trump Tower, uh, something that uh, Bob Mueller found would be the, the most lucrative deal of Donald Trump's life. Uh, he was willing to do that even when he wasn't in all this kind of debt that he is in now with these judgments against him. He is more financially imperiled now, I think, than, than ever before. Uh, more economic incentive, more uh, greed uh, uh, operating here now than in the past, and Ukraine is in a much more vulnerable position. He has a lot more to offer uh, the Kremlin dictator, so it is a grave, as the, as the Senate bipartisan report said, a grave counterintelligence risk to have Manafort anywhere near that campaign. In addition to that, we know that Donald Trump is uh, is facing maybe, I don't know if the trial will ever happen because Judge Aileen Cannon doesn't seem interested in having the trial ever happen. But if that case were to go forward, Donald Trump is accused of stealing national security secrets up to and including nuclear secrets that he is also accused of sharing with people who didn't have uh, or the right to access to them. How would we even find out? if Donald Trump decided that that is something that might be something that's useful for Manafort to broker around the world. I'm just trying to think, you know, use my lurid imagination with Donald Trump, which I think we sometimes have failed to do. Well, you know, it doesn't really require that lurid of an imagination. It just requires recollection. Uh, you'll recall in his meeting with Putin when he essentially banished everyone out of the room. Uh, he didn't want witnesses to his conversation with Putin. Uh, and as I recall, I think he was reliant even on the uh, interpreter or the Russian interpreter. I don't, know, I don't even know if it was his or Putin's. So there's lots of reasons to be concerned about any private conversation he might have with Putin, but also whatever he would relate to Paul Manafort uh, about national security or intelligence matters that might be of interest or value uh, to Russian intelligence uh, is exactly the reason why I think when the intelligence community briefs him, as the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party, they're going to really dumb down anything they tell him because they know they can't trust him with whatever they share. I have two, very, two, quick, two more quick questions. One, your reaction to Peter Navarro uh, now finally serving time. Well, I think it's very important affirmation of the fact you can't just thumb your nose at a subpoena. There's no separate standard for cronies of Donald Trump, uh, and without a penalty like going to jail, when people receive congressional subpoenas, they'll just say, well, this is optional. Uh, now I think a congressional subpoena has real teeth, and that's vitally important for our oversight role.